Disneyland, the happiest place on earth, beloved worldwide, and also pretty expensive. What if there was a cheaper way? What if you could visit Disneyland from the comfort of your own home? Well, that's where Disneyland Adventure comes in. Disneyland Adventures was originally released on the Xbox 360 in 2011. Not just any normal game though, it was a Kinect game, Microsoft's answer to the Nintendo Wii. Where you were the controller, motion controls were all the rage at the time, and with the huge success of the Nintendo Wii, it makes sense for other companies to try and capitalize on the trend. In my opinion, Kinect Disneyland Adventures was one of the better Kinect games, it's no Kinect Star Wars, that's for sure, but it was probably one of the best games for the Kinect. It easily had some of the best controls of any Kinect game that I played back in the day. But, unfortunately, the Kinect didn't catch on, and in 2016, Microsoft would give up on the software. The recreation of Disneyland and Kinect Disneyland Adventures was too good to just be left behind in what would become a lost game in the Kinect history. In 2017, Zobo Studios, known today for the company that ports old Star Wars games to new consoles, and is rumored to be developing a Knights of the Old Republic remake, took the reins to bring this game to the Xbox One, and specifically to Microsoft's new Xbox One X with 4K enhancements. Gone was the required Kinect you can now play with a controller, something fans of the game wanted since the original release back in 2011. If you ask anyone that has played this game, they will tell you two things. The recreation of Disneyland is genuinely really impressive, and the mini games that serve as the attractions are bad. The mini games made sense when it was a Kinect game, but they do not transfer well to a controller. It just comes off as cheap and lazy, leaving you wishing that this game had no mini games and instead and featured full-blown 3D recreations of the rides. The absolute best thing about this game, and the reason you should play it, is the beautiful recreation of Disneyland, from the entrance to Main Street to every section of the park. It's recreated wonderfully, even having hidden Mickeys and some fun Easter eggs hidden all around the park. Like if you go to the fire station, you'll see Walt's light is still on. Now this is a version of Disneyland that will forever be stuck around 2011. No Galaxy's Edge here, and if you go to the entrance for the park, you can see the old California Adventure entrance. Walking around the park sounds like Disneyland, it'll bring back nostalgic memories of going to the park, just with a lot less crowds, and some missing rides like No Star Tours, Roger Rabbit, or Indiana Jones. When you're exploring the park, you can interact with characters scattered around it. They will ask you to do things for them. This is typically just a fetch quest to find a certain number of select objects, then return it to whoever asked you to go get them. Like a new outfit, for example, or a fishing pole from Stinky Pete. You can also collect pins and get autographs from the characters in the park. So your two main gameplay loops are kind of boring, uninspired former connect levels or fetch quests. I really prefer the fetch quest to the rides in this game. The rides just aren't fun, not even a little. At least the fetch quest you get to run around and explore more of Disneyland. Is this a game you should play? Well that all depends. How much do you like Disney and Disneyland? Are you a huge fan of the park? Then yes, absolutely. You'd love this game regardless of the bad mini games. Just the recreation of the park alone is enough for some people to love this game. If you're not huge into the park, then I'd say probably skip it. It is available on Xbox Game Pass though, so if you subscribe to that, then you should already check it out, and I'm sure most people would still enjoy an adventure in Disneyland. And remember... You can't change your fate, but you can change your socks. Farewell.